Yeah. So let's look at number 19 and 20 from worksheet 3. Let's see. This just straight up tells us what quadrant we're in. I mean, I guess it doesn't say quadrant. It says pi over 2 and pi. But if we remember where those are, it means our angle is in the second quadrant. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, oh, here's one of those where it doesn't look like there's an, you know, it doesn't look like a fraction, but we can just turn it into a fraction by putting it over one. And then I need to be careful about who's y and who's x, but opposite is always y and adjacent is always x. All right, so the y value is, oh, this is confusing a little bit. The x value looks like it's 1, and the y value looks like it's 3. But which one of those is negative? The 1 is negative, because the 1 is the one that's going backwards. So that negative, is, someone wrote it in the top, but really it came from the 1 in the denominator. So be careful, you can't just... You know, just line up, line them up. You got to pay attention to where the the angle is to get the, the plus and minus stuff right. Let's see, a squared plus b squared, nine plus one, square root of ten. We already said the y value is the opposite, the x value is the adjacent. My hypotenuse is easy to spot. So again, I like to label them with O and A and H because now it's just like all the other O, A, H problems. So now it's just a regular old SOHCAHTOA problem. Opposite over hypotenuse. But then we have to fix it. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And another one to fix. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, would be negative 3. And then the flips. Remember, we always do the others as flips. I don't even remember what, what they are in terms of letters. I remember who they're partnered with and just flip them over. So if I flip sine, root 10 over 3. If I flip cosine, I get root 10 over negative 1. But why don't I just write that as negative square root of 10? And then if I flip negative 3, I get negative 1 third. Again, the, the, what you write as the answer to the problem is not really the main part of the problem. The main part of the problem is drawing the triangle right. After that, it's just Sokotoa. Let's do one more. Let's look at number 20, and then we'll move on. Cosine is ugh, something ugly. And our angle is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Let's see, pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So I know I'm in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. which is x over hypotenuse. So my x value is 2 square root of 6, and my hypotenuse is 6. And my y value, I'll have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's a good one to do, because some people can't figure out how to square something that looks like that. But if I square the 2, I get 4. If I square the square root of 6, I get 6. So b squared equals 36 minus 24 is 12. So if I square root that, I'm running out of space. I'm doing some stuff in my head here. That would be 2 square root of 3. And once again, what I've written is not quite right. 
So you always got to be on the lookout for those negatives. I mean, they're not. If I prompt you to think about it, you won't miss it because it's not hard. It's just you remember to think about it. That if it's on the left, x is negative. If it's down, y is negative. All right. Uh, I guess we're ready to answer, but I'm probably going to label them opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. You don't have to do that, but I think that makes life a little easier moving forward. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Negative 2 root 3 over 6. But that'll reduce. So negative root 3 over 3. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 square root 6 over 6. That'll reduce. Square root of 6 over 3. This one's yucky with all these square roots in there. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, the 2's will reduce. And then I need to fix it. I'm going to slow down on fixing this one. So I've got negative square root of 18 over 6. It's like using all of our math we've ever done this year in this one problem here. Square root of 18, let's see, that's 9 and 2, so negative square root 3, or excuse me, negative 3 square root 2 over 6. So all of that becomes negative root 2 over 2. That's a lot of work. And we're not even done yet. because We've got to go do the other ones. And they're all going to need to be fixed as well. So cosecant is the flip of sine. Um, if I flip the original, I'm going to have to reduce. So I may as well flip this one. 3 over negative square root of 3. I multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. And I get 3 square root of 3 over 3. So I'm really not showing my work there, but I end up with negative square root of 3. Because the 3's would cancel. I got more work to show on the, on the secant, or more room to show work on the secant. So I'll flip the second one here, 3 over square root of 6. So that becomes 3 square root of 6 over 6, which becomes square root of 6 over 2. Yeah. Fractions and square roots, you eat your lunch on this problem. Cotangent, I want to flip tangent. I've got like five different options of things I could flip. But none of them look really any better than the other. So I think I'll just jump to the end and flip this one. 2 over negative square root of 2. Lots of 2's, so I'm going to slow down and show my work on this one. 2 square root 2 over negative 2. So that becomes negative square root of 2. What a hassle that one was.